Imagine that when you wake up one day, you find that the dollar has lost a significant amount of its value overnight, prices for everyday goods have gone through the roof, and your savings have taken a huge hit. Now, think about what would happen if this nightmare came true, and that the answer to whether Saudi Arabia's threat to sell oil and currencies other than the US dollar, and its threat to sell the US Treasury bonds could have a massive impact on your everyday life. From the price of your morning cup of coffee to the stability of your retirement savings, the potential consequences of this question are staggering. In this video we unravel the complexities of global finance and uncover the shocking truth about the relationship between Saudi Arabia and the United States and the impact it could have on your life. In reality, Saudi Arabia's threat to sell oil and currencies other than the US dollar and its threat to sell the US Treasury bonds it owns are more connected than they seem. The two issues came up in 2016, when Barack Obama was president, Washington tried to blackmail Riyadh by passing a law that would let the victims of the September 11th attacks sue the Saudi government, saying that Saudi officials helped the people who did the attacks. By passing this law, the US courts will be able to seize Saudi assets on American land, which at the time were worth $750 billion, so that the families of the victims can get compensation. Later, word got out that talks were going on to sell oil and other currencies than the dollar, especially the Chinese Yuan. Of course, the American threat didn't happen, and Obama did what was expected and used his right to veto to stop the law from going into effect. This is the same way that other attempts to pass the NOPEC law have failed in the past, so it's clear that this will also be the end of this last attempt. Now, we don't have a clear idea of what these treasury bonds are. They are just debt securities issued by governments to pay for their spending. The longer it takes for the bonds to be paid back, the more benefits they offer. They are often bought by local and foreign funds and institutions, and are backed by the country's ability to pay its debts. Because we're talking about the US, the largest economy in the world. American bonds are the most common because their risks are low or almost non-existent. Some of you may say, well, that's how bonds work, what does petrodollar mean? Before I start to explain, listen up guys, and please pay close attention because this story is without a doubt, very important, the petrodollar is the name for the dollars that countries pay for oil or crude oil, it gets this name because almost all oil sold on the global market is paid for in US dollars, even if the US has nothing to do with the deal. The dollar is the most important reserve currency in the world, so it makes sense that most transactions between different countries are done in US dollars. In 1944, as part of the Bretton Woods Agreement, the dollar was fixed at $35 per ounce of gold, the US promised that it would stick to this rate, it would buy any amount of dollars from any country at any time if that country asked. Based on current gold prices, this means that the US should keep enough gold to cover the value of any amount of dollars it gives out. At this time, the US hit by a series of economic crises that made it unable to abide by its responsibilities. Thus, it printed huge amount of dollars that surpassed the gold that it had. This disturbed many countries, including allied countries such as France, which contacted the Americans to exchange their dollar for gold. The answer from the Americans was that they couldn't get it back. After that, US President Richard Nixon went on TV on August 13, 1971, and said that any country would no longer be able to exchange dollars for gold for a short time. This short time is still going on as of this moment, so, the fixed exchange rate system has been considered dead since Nixon's speech. The main thing that kept the dollar strong after that was trust in the US government's commitment and the power of its finances, Nixon's actions, or the Nixon shock as it is now called, caused the dollar's value against gold to drop from $35 per ounce to $135 per ounce in 1973, which was a huge drop and it happened the same year as the war between Israel and Egypt. At that time, Washington made a big mistake when it sent weapons and money to support the Israel. This angered most of the Arab oil-producing countries in OPEC, led by Saudi Arabia, so, the Arab countries decided to step in and help Egypt and Syria. They also decided to cut oil production by 25%, which caused the price of a barrel of oil to rise from $3 to $17 at the time. It caused inflation rates to rise, the industrial market to slow down, and the stock markets to crash. In fact, the Arab country's decision sent the whole American economy into a recession that hasn't been seen since the Second World War. 
So how could the US have gotten out of that situation? They wanted to link the dollar to something else important and strategic on the world market instead of gold, even if it was only implicitly, so. In July 1974, Nixon sent Treasury Secretary William Simon and his deputy to Jeddah on a mission that couldn't fail, to convince the Saudis to sell oil to America and the rest of the world in US dollars. In exchange, the Americans promised to do everything they could right away to keep the dollar's value stable and to give the kingdom everything it needed to protect its security. The media called this deal the petrodollar deal, and the Americans say that Saudi Arabia and the other OPEC countries had no choice but to sell their oil in dollars in order to keep their earning in a stable currency. This is real, but as usual, the US only tells half the story, the truth is that the US needed the petrodollar deal more than Saudi Arabia did and they went out of their way to get it because it kept the dollar from falling apart. That's because of the second part of the agreement, the deal generated enormous demand for the dollar around the world, which supported the dollar regain a lot of its balance after the Nixon shock. It also helped the United States get rid of its trade deficit and pay for the large gap in government spending. But what does that agreement say? Yes. It's exactly what you guessed, Saudi Arabia promised to buy US debt or treasury bonds which would put the extra money that came from selling oil back into the US economy. So, did the United States have debts and try to sell them to pay for its spending? The answer is yes, because this is what the American economy needed, after the Nixon shock and after the dollar became the world's reserve currency without being backed by gold, the United States ran into a troubles that economists call the Triffin Dilemma or the Triffin Paradox. So, what did Truffin say? He said that any superpower that turns its currency into a global reserve currency puts its own financial goals and its international goals in direct conflict with each other. But what does this mean? It means that for the dollar to be a reliable global reserve currency, the US must be able to give it to all countries and organizations that ask for it, pump it into the world economy consistently, and keep any shortages from happening. This means that a lot of money is leaving the United States, on the other hand, we all know that for an economy to grow, it needs to attract cash flows and stop money from leaving. The country, whose currencies are used as global reserve currencies, is in the middle of a dispute between two groups with different goals, the interest on the money that has to go to the world market and the power of the money that has to come back to the country to be spent there. This confusion between pumping and limiting makes the country, whose currencies are used as global reserve currencies, a target of two different interests, as a result of the conflict between these two interests, that country's current account will always have a deficit, which means that there is more going out than coming in, this causes a budget deficit, which means that there is less money in the country than is needed to pay for government spending. In other words, spending is more than what comes in. So, how did the US pay for its budget gap? It would borrow, just like any other country with a budget deficit, so, if the most powerful country in the world would to borrow money at a time when the whole world's economy is in trouble, what country could America borrow from? Sure, it would borrow money from the few countries that have a lot of dollars but don't need them. In the 1970s, Saudi Arabia and some other oil-rich OPEC countries were the only countries that met this requirement. As we've already said, the famous petrodollar deal involved putting the extra money from selling oil into U.S. Treasury bonds so that the U.S. government could spend it. This may explain why Nixon chose William Simon to be Secretary of the Treasury. At the time, Nixon brought Simon from his job as Director of the Treasury Bond Office at the famous investment bank Salomon Brothers to that government position, simply because, as described by Bloomberg Agency, he was the person who understood the deep appeal of U.S. government debt and knew how to convince the Saudis that U.S. Treasury bonds are the safest. But what was the situation of Saudi Arabia? Why did the kingdom decide to agree to this deal? Did Saudi Arabia love America, or was it because the Saudis were weak and would have had to do what America said? Neither of these is the right answer, neither the US nor the Saudis were too strong or too weak, but the Arab oil embargo during the war between Egypt and Israel hurt the American economy. The simple answer is that the dollar was the most reliable way to price oil, and it was almost the only option. This means that US Treasury bonds were one of the safest ways to store oil profits at the time, because the US was and still is the country best able to pay off its debts in the world after World War II and up to the present day.
Also, the Americans promised to put some of this money back into Saudi Arabia in 1979 to help build projects there. Lastly, it was agreed that some of this money would come from the United States as loans to the banks of developing countries in Africa and Latin America. These loans would be used to buy industrial goods made in the United States, Japan, and Europe. This will make the industrial sectors of these countries grow, which means they will buy more oil from Saudi Arabia and OPEC, and so on. It will be a cycle of profits that keeps going and going. This part of loans to developing countries is, of course, just theory compared to what actually happened on the ground. David Spiro says in his book The Hidden Hand of American Hegemony that Saudi Arabia bought about 20% of all U.S. Treasury bonds owned by foreigners in 1977. This was only three years after the petrodollar deal, truth be told, this is only a rough estimate, as the U.S. Treasury, per an arrangement with the Kingdom, concealed the Saudis' ownership of Treasury bonds until 2016, at which point Washington disclosed the precise amounts owned by each oil exporting country, including the Kingdom. In 2016, Saudi Arabia owned U.S. Treasury bonds worth $117 billion, according to data from that year. From then until now, this number has changed almost every month, but according to data from October 2022, it has stayed the same at $121.1 billion. This puts Saudi Arabia at number 16 on the list of the countries that own the most U.S. bonds outside of the United States. Even though $121 billion is not a small number, it is not a huge number when compared to all of America's debts. In October of last year, the total national debt of the United States was $31.2 trillion. This huge debt can be broken down into two big groups debts to government agencies and debts to public entities or the public, this government agency debt is just $6.82 trillion worth of money that the U.S. Treasury borrowed from other government entities in the U.S. Someone might wonder why other entities of the U.S. government borrow money from the Treasury. I can tell you that some entities of the U.S. government, like the Social Security Fund and the Military Pension Fund, have more money than they need right now. So, instead of saving that money, these entities lend it to the government and the treasury with an interest rate. The second and biggest type of U.S. debt is $25 trillion worth of public debt. It goes to U.S. banks and investors, the Federal Reserve, state and local governments, mutual funds and savings funds, and, most importantly, foreign governments like Saudi Arabia that buy treasury bonds. The value of foreign debts is about $7.2 trillion and Saudi Arabia owns $121 billion of that. This means that Saudi Arabia only owns about 1.6% of the U.S.'s foreign debts. So, who owns the most of the United States debt around the world, according to the most recent data, which is for October 2022, first is Japan with about $1.078 trillion, then China with $910 billion, then Britain with $638.5 billion, then Belgium with about $327 billion, then the Cayman Islands with about $297 billion, then Luxembourg with about $296 billion, then Switzerland with about $263 billion, then Ireland with $239 billion, then Brazil with about $225 billion, then France with about $218 billion, Taiwan with $216 billion, then Canada with $215 billion, then India with $213 billion, then Hong Kong with $186 billion, then Singapore with approximately $177 billion, then Saudi Arabia comes with $121 billion. This makes us ask the basic and most important question of the video. Can Saudi Arabia cause trouble and punish the U.S. by not buying their debts anymore, or, to get their money back, they could sell the American debt they own, and if Saudi Arabia does that, what might happen? We are not the only ones asking this question, American decision-making centers also ask it every time there is a crisis, and not just with Saudi Arabia but with any country that owns American bonds, especially China, which owns much more American debt than Saudi Arabia. So, the process of selling U.S. debt in retaliation is called arming the debt or arming the bonds by Americans. This term means that a big country like China 
Brazil, France, or Saudi Arabia decides to get back at the U.S. for any reason by selling all of its American debts at once, this will force Washington to raise the interest rate on bonds to get more people to buy the large amounts available. This will lower the value of the dollar and make dollar-denominated assets less valuable inside and outside the United States. The size of these bad effects will, of course, depend on how many bonds are sold and how well U.S. government agencies, especially the Federal Reserve, can buy them up. In the case of Saudi Arabia, if we look at the numbers, we can see that the amount of American debt that Saudi Arabia owns is pretty small compared to what it was in the 1970s. This means that if Saudi Arabia decided to sell its debts, it wouldn't do too much damage to the US. The second thing that gives Americans peace of mind is that the losses from the sale of these debts will hurt Saudi Arabia itself. This is because the kingdom keeps most of its sovereign cash reserves in dollars, and it has assets and investments that are valued in dollars both inside and outside of the US. This means that any drop in the value of the US dollar will hurt the kingdom's assets, making them worth less. A key point is that if the kingdom had already decided to slowly get rid of bonds and dollars, it would need to move its assets to another currency or at least spread them out among different currencies, since the US dollar is the most stable currency in the world. This step has a lot of risks. More importantly, it needs a big change that could really shake up the world economy. Saudi Arabia and other OPEC countries need to start selling most of their oil and currencies other than the dollar. Changing like this is hard and complicated, and it will be a huge blow to the historic petrodollar deal. But if we look at the world from Saudi Arabia's point of view right now, we can see that is not completely impossible, even though it will be hard to happen in the next few years. This is likely to change in the long run for a number of reasons. For the Saudis, the link between oil and U.S. security is old and no longer useful. At the moment, America is the largest oil producer in the world. This means that the U.S. shale oil industry is a major competitor to Saudi oil, and it makes no sense at all for Saudi Arabia's policy to help the U.S. at the expense of its own interests. Since a long time ago, the U.S. hasn't been the biggest buyer of Saudi oil. Instead, the biggest buyers are now East Asian countries like China, Japan, South Korea, and India. China alone buys 25% of all Saudi oil exports. Things have started to change even when it comes to alliances and security. It is true that the United States still makes and sells more weapons than any other country, but the international system is much more flexible now than it was in the 1970s and during the Cold War. This means that countries can make different alliances and not just choose one side. The Saudis' message to the US can be summed up as follows, we will work with everyone, we will sell and diversify our suppliers of weapons, we will increase or decrease oil production in a way that serves our own interests, and we may even sell oil in other currencies, like the Chinese Yuan, and there may be contracts for petroleums as there are for petrodollars. Several Saudi officials have said this more than once in the past few months. To get right to the point, can Saudi Arabia sell U.S. Treasury bonds and other assets in the U.S. right now? At the moment, the answer is no. Even though the U.S. and the Kingdom have had tense relations in recent years, they still need each other from an economic point of view. The U.S. needs Saudi Arabia because the Kingdom is the only one that can control the global oil markets. On the other hand, Saudi Arabia needs the U.S. because it can't get by without the dollar right now. This is it. I want to end with a question, is it possible that Saudi Arabia will soon sell a lot of oil with a currency besides the dollar? Comment your thoughts below and do not forget to subscribe, and if you liked the video, please hit the like button and share the video. Goodbye.